Thank you everyone for, t for joining us today. My name is Vincent Herrera and I'm from Heat Press Nation. And today we have Jimmy Lamb joining us. How are you doing, Jimmy? Hey, I'm doing great, Vincent. Glad to be here. Um, today is the first of a five-part series we're doing with Heat Press Nation about starting a sublimation business. So today what we're going to do is focus on making money with sublimation so that you can get a good look at the different opportunities that are out there for sublimation. Because okay, there's so many different things you can do with sublimation. And then after that, over the next uh, few weeks, we're going to do focused follow-ons to this one. The first one will be how to select the right sublimation printer. And that will be followed by how to select the right sublimation heat press. And then we'll follow that one with how to select the right sublimation graphics. And then the final one will be how to sell sublimated products. So those are going to take place on uh, June 20th, how to select the right sublimation printer. June 27th, how to select the right sublimation heat press. July the 11th, how to se select the right sublimation graphics. And then on July the 18th, how to sell sublimated products. So we're hoping you'll tune in with us on those other series and get a good insight into what it takes to put together a sublimation business as well as the opportunities for making money with a sublimation business. So that's where our big focus is going to be on. And again, today we're going to start with making money with sublimation. So what exactly is sublimation? Uh, sublimation, it's a it's a digital printing process, but it's quite unique and quite different than traditional ink processes. The majority of ink processes use something called a chemical binder, which is included within the ink, or in the case of some systems where you're using an off-the-shelf inkjet printer along with specialized transfer paper, that binder may be in the paper instead of the ink. But either way, what happens is when you apply that image to that product, that binder that's either in the ink or the paper is going to be activated using heat, and then it helps the ink to actually bind to the surface of whatever you're printing. For example, screen printing. When you do screen printing, the binder is in the ink. Once you finish printing the shirt, you put it on the, um, an oven, and in the oven, the heat activates the binder so that the ink bonds to the surface, okay, and some of the different transfer processes. All the same kind of thing. You have to have a binder to make the ink adhere to the surface. The exception being sublimation. Sublimation does not require a binder, does not use a binder of any kind. Instead, it depends on a molecular bonding process. So sublimation itself will only bond with certain molecules, and but once it's done, it's a very permanent type of process, and it's actually subsurface. It's not on the top of the surface, it's below the surface. So, for example, if you were to print with sublimation onto a plaque, maybe it's an award plaque, it actually is going into the surface such that you could even scratch this plaque surface with your fingernail and you could not damage that sublimation. If you're working with apparel, it's down inside the fibers instead of on top of the fibers. Therefore, sublimated apparel will not crack, peel, or fade when washed. Okay. As I mentioned, it bonds with certain types of molecules. It does not bond with everything. So sublimation will only bond with polymers and polyesters. It will not bond with cotton, for example. So you could not have sublimate a cotton shirt. Actually, you could. It just wouldn't hold up if you went to wash it. Okay, So it doesn't work with that. So all the sublimation products either have to be composed of polymers and polyesters or have a polymer coating applied to it. Now, if you go and start researching, and you can start on the Heat Press Nation website to see all the great things that can be done with sublimation, you're going to find that there are hundreds and hundreds of different products that already have a polymer coating on them that you can sublimate. Some of these products are wood, glass, acrylic, metal, slate. So we have lots of different materials the key thing for sublimation is that it has a polymer coating on the surface. Now, if you've never handled anything like that, you may think when I say a polymer coating that it feels rubberized on the surface. Absolutely not. If you pick up a metal panel or a metal license plate or metal dog tags or whatever that are designed for sublimation, you will not feel the polymer. Okay, it's there, but you do not feel it. It still feels like metal because basically it is. So that's the key thing with sublimation. Okay, well, we can only go to those types of um, product surfaces. Now, 
When you sublimate, it is considered a transfer process, but I'm careful with that word because different people see transfers differently, okay, because there's lots and lots of different transfers out there. What we're going to do is we're going to use an inkjet printer equipped with sublimation inks, and it's actually dye, and dye is different from ink, but just for our purposes of discussion, we can call it ink, and we're all fine, okay? So we're going to print onto sublimation transfer paper using sublimation dyes and a sublimation printer. We're going to take that sheet of transfer paper, combine it with the item that we're going to sublimate, put them underneath a wonderful heat press from Heat Press Nation, and during that pressing process, which for most products, 400 degrees Fahrenheit, one minute medium pressure. There are some variations, but that's, that's the standard for most products. Two unique things happen during that process of using the heat press. Number one is the sublimation uh, dye on that paper that image that you created, that sublimation dye turns into a gas. Number two, the um, polymer or polyester uh, components were composed of microcells or microfibers in the case of polyester. Those will actually open such as to receive the sublimation gas internally. And then once we open the heat press and it cools down, those cells in the polymers or polyesters will close up and then they will be encapsulating the sublimation dye within the surface instead of on top of the surface. Now that piece of paper that we used in the process that had the ink, that does not stay. It, it gets thrown away. Okay, You just take it and throw it in the trash, you're done. The only thing that transfers is the ink and it goes internal to the surface, not on top of. So keep that in mind. It makes it very, very different Okay, um, than many of the other ink processes out there. Now, it's a very simple, fast, and profitable production process. It really is. Let me tell you, I started out my career in product de decoration uh, doing embroidery. And my first embroidery machine was $25,000. And it was a two-head embroidery machine for anybody out there that does embroidery. But still, $25,000 is what I paid to get into it. You can get into sublimation with, with a decent printer and a decent heat press for 2500 okay, and do far more different products I could ever dream of with embroidery. So it does become a very low-cost, high-tech type of decoration process. When you look at some of the advantage, very quick setup. If you have a good quality image, uh, you can start, uh, you can print it out almost immediately and go to press it on something and can be done within just a few minutes. It's not like setting up screen printing or embroidery, some of the other processes. We can reproduce thousands of colors, about 680,000 different colors. Very low production costs. When we look at sublimation, it's less than a penny per square inch with ink cost. Uh, depending on which printer you're using, one printer it's half a penny per square inch, another one it's two-thirds of a per penny per square inch, so very low production cost. No special skills required, no color separations for any of you that might be screen printers, you know what I'm talking about. And it's ideal for doing short runs, meaning small jobs as well as big jobs. So we can turn it around fast, we can do small quantity, that doesn't hurt us. You know, you would never do small quantity with some of these other printing processes out there because the setup takes too long and it's not worth it to just do one or two items. But we can certainly do that with sublimation. A lot of great advantages with that. Now I keep mentioning the polymer connection. Gave you a nice little spill on that. Um, and, and sometimes people look at it and say, hey, now this seems really limiting. But when you when you really start researching the range of products, you're going to find out it's not limiting at all. You know, everything that you see on that screen right there has been sublimated. And there's several different metal uh, materials there. There is a metal product which is over here. Uh, this is acrylic. This is wood. Uh, this was a poly flag. That's actually a poly computer bag. We've got flip-flops we can do. Uh, we have ceramic products with coatings on them. I mean, we have lots and lots of different products. Really, it's almost the sky is the limit. And that's the beauty of sublimation. So many different unique things that we can do with the same system. Okay, I mean, the same printer and paper is used on everything. The only time you may vary a little bit is when you're talking about the heat press for example, if you want to do a coffee mug, you would obviously have to use a mug press instead of a flat press. But other than that, one system pretty much does it all. Now, another neat thing about sublimation is that it is an HD high-definition process. So we can do fantastic photography, provided we have a really good image, and really awesome, bright, bold graphics as well. And you will find if you get into sublimations, a lot of times people are like, yeah, I really don't have to do pictures that much. But you will find that pictures add value. And if you can start incorporating pictures in on a lot of your products, and you find that you can when you have that capability, you'll start to find that 
that image itself will raise the perceived value of a product, meaning you can get a better margin. So keep that in mind. It isn't always just about doing pure photography as it much as it is in combining photography with other things. For example, you start thinking about signage. When you're producing signage with sublimation, a very popular pr approach. Uh, let's think if you're doing a restaurant, for example, you've got pictures of the food, you know, in uh, – you know, little signs that go on tabletops, you know, promoting a special or whatever. And that takes a, to the harm, because you know, if you're like me, you like to see pictures of the food before you eat it. Though it may not look like that when it comes out. When I look at a menu, I like to see a picture, <laughs> okay, especially if it's something I don't know what it is. So, you know what, that can be very useful. Now, when we talk about apparel, as I said, this is a polyester polymer type of process. It does not work for cotton. And... That sounds limiting too, but because a lot of times you say polyester, people think of the um, the silky, stretchy, form-fitting type of material, which is a very popular form of polyester. We see it in sports and you know active wear and that type of thing too. But a lot of times you have a client who really wants you know 100% cotton, and the neat thing is that there is a form of polyester called spun polyester that looks and feels like cotton. And you would be shocked if you've never touched it before and say, oh, wow, that's cotton? Yes. Now, most of our sublimation products or what we look for with sublimation products on apparel is we want them to be what we call poly performance. And poly performance means that it's polyester with moisture wicking capabilities. So when we do have these products, they're very comfortable to wear. And we can thank a company called Under Armour for that because Under Armour made poly performance very mainstream. So we do have a lot of different products out there in the apparel marketplace for sublimation. We can do blended products that say are a blend of polyester and cotton. Uh, but you can do that. Uh, it will not be as bright in color. In fact, it will have sort of a washed out look if you do a 50-50 instead of 100% uh, poly. But by the same token, I use that to my advantage because I use it as a special effect. And if I'm doing, for example, for surf shops who like that retro look, um, I will actually market it as a special effect that costs more. Okay, even though it actually costs less because 50-50 shirts are cheaper than 100% polyester shirts. But always the way I present it to somebody is, hey, it's a special effect, costs a little bit more, but it's going to really do great wonders for your product line. So, you know, you just think about little things like that as you go. It also is worth mentioning with apparel products, because many apparel products come in color, one of the things that, that we are unable to do with sublimation is print the color white. Uh, sublimation uses a process called CMYK, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and we combine those base colors to create, you know, the wide range of colors that we print, but there is no combination of those colors that will equal the color white. So, when, if you need the color white with sublimation, when you key it in, when you're setting up your design, even if you're like an RGB and telling it to be white, and you're putting in the code, when it converts to CMYK because there is no white, it just leaves it as no color, or it leaves it open. Now, if you're looking at this shirt here and you see a soccer ball on there, if I printed that on a light shirt, especially a white shirt, everywhere that needs to be white in that soccer ball is no color, so the color of the surface being white represents the white that's not in the actual ink part of the design. Okay. Now, if I put that same soccer ball there on the yellow shirt, what color is the soccer ball going to be? Yellow, all right, because that area of no color now is the same color as the shirt. The only time this is an issue is with apparel. When you look at the products, the blank products for sublimation that are not apparel, almost all of them have a white surface. The sublimatable surface area is white. Now, you may be working with like with a wooden plaque, and, and it's a wooden plaque, and it's got brown edges or black edges or whatever, but the area where the sublimation goes would be white so that you don't have to worry about not having the color white in your ink set when you're going to print with that, okay? So that's an important thing to understand about sublimation, but it only is really a factor when you talk about apparel, okay? Because apparel comes in so many different colors. Uh, so we can do light colors, we can do white without any problem, but we're unable to do dark colors and we're unable to reproduce the color white on colored backgrounds. 
Well, Sublimation opens the door to a wide range of products. Again, everything you see there on that screen was sublimated. They were all sublimated using the same system. The only difference was the heat press that was used for the water bottle and the mugs was a round heat press known as a mug press to accommodate the shape of the substrate. So that's the thing you need to take with you is all this wide variety of different things. I can't even begin to show you all the different products, but I can tell you that there is buried as fishing lures and toilet seats, okay? So there's just you know, lots and lots of things out there that we can work with. Okay, so what does sublimation production look like? I'm not really going to go through the printers and heat press options today because that's going to be the focus of our next two presentations, but I'm going to show you basically how it's done so you understand the process. We call it Create Print Press, three steps. Create with popular graphic software, print with sublimation inks and inkjet printer designed for sublimation, and press with a flatbed mug or whatever type of press that you have, okay? Now, first step, create images, keeping in mind that with sublimation, we have lots of different products of different sizes and shapes, so we need to shape our artwork to fit the actual product. Now, I'm a big believer in what we call full bleed printing, which means we print from edge to edge. So you can see the frog has a green background so that we're actually printing from edge to edge. If you didn't have the green background, it would be white, and to me it would be rather boring. So full bleed means that we're running our color all the way to the edge of product. Well, you can imagine when we start looking through products, all the different shapes and sizes, that it can be a little tedious sometimes to set up the artwork. And yes, you can use programs like Photoshop and Corel Draw, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with those. But we also have one that we created at Sawgrass called Creative Studio. And when you're buying one of the uh, Virtuoso printers that Heat Press Nation sells, you will get, at no charge, the Creative Studio software. Now, this is a very sophisticated software. It's, it's not on the same level as Corel or Adobe, but it still is designed specifically for you to be able to combine images and text and uh, apply them to specific product templates. So we have templates from all these different manufacturers of all these different types of products. We get over a thousand templates in our system already. And the template is designed to help you with the artwork because you don't really have to crop your artwork to the product. The system does it for you. So I'm going to tell you the artwork for the frog is actually square, but when you can, when you put it on the screen here with the template for this coaster that's going on, um, all the other parts of it that are that are bigger than the coaster are automatically just cut off. So it makes the process easy. This thing comes with thousands of design elements and stock images already in there. Okay, and of course thousands of product templates. It manages sublimation color for you. Uh, you can create something like that in a matter of really a minute pretty easily. I mean, it's just a fantastic program. Comes at no charge. You're not required to use it. You can use any graphics program you wish with your Sawgrass sublimation system. But I'm just letting you know that's one of the benefits of buying the Sawgrass system that you get this. And we have thousands of users already who absolutely love this thing. I think there's about 12,000 active users right now. Um, this was also just so you'll you'll know you realize that it's it's been out a couple of years and we do keep adding new features to it. So whatever you get today, you know every few months we keep adding more features. We listen to what you want. We put together more features. So anyway, first step is we need to create our artwork to fit onto the actual product it will be applied to. Then what we're going to do is print that out now. One of the things when we print with sublimation and we're doing full bleed is we normally print the background, the, the edges, the edges of the image slightly larger than what it's going on. If we go back here and look real quick, this particular template on the screen, you'll see that all the way around there's this little band of color that's a different color, so it looks almost grayish. That's called our product bleed area. And when you're setting this up, you will actually extend your artwork to the outer edge of that product bleed. What happens is this will print everything that's in that little band will print everything on the outside of it will not. So it's going to print slightly larger than the actual coaster. In this case, the coaster is where the darker colors are. All right, so this is what it looks like printed out. The image is slightly larger than the product is going on. Why do we do that? Because as you can see, when I put this coaster face down, if it was the exact same size of the artwork, it would be very hard to line it up perfectly. Here, you can see it clearly line it up, and that 
a little extra area isn't important, and you should never put important details in the extra bleed area, so that it makes it very visually easy to line up. Here we're applying a little strip of heat tape, looks like scotch tape, never get the two confused because it's going to go under 400 degrees Fahrenheit uh, on the heat press. But this is going to hold the coasters in place so they don't shift when we put it under the heat press. And you'll see that in the next picture, that we're actually going to flip that sheet of paper over so the coaster is on the bottom and the paper is on the top, put it under the heat press. For this particular application, we're going to do 400 degrees for one minute with a medium pressure. All the sublimation happens behind the scenes. We open the heat press, immediately remove the paper while it's hot, and we're left with, in this case, four coasters fully sublimated. Okay? Production time, two to three minutes for most jobs, not including artwork, two to three minutes of the production. So we can knock stuff out pretty fast. We can do multiple pieces at the same time if our heat press is big enough. Okay? And that's what we did with the, the coasters. Uh, it really, depending on the heat press you have and the printer you buy, you can probably do 12 of those at the same time. So you can get some production going with it. So that's it. Create print press. Not too difficult. Okay, so let's look at some of the applications and markets that we can approach with sublimation. Because really today our focus is making money with sublimation or opportunities for making money. And when you have something as versatile as sublimation, tons of opportunities, it's really up to you to go pursue them and make them work for you. So one of the first categories, award products. Okay, award products. Uh, I don't know what you're doing right now. Maybe you're doing apparel. But suddenly, if you have the ability to create awards, you become an awards and recognition provider. And here's just some different examples of you know, some of the award products that can be created. Neat thing is we can do photo plaques which means that you can, in this case, have a team photo on your championship plaque here. You can have individuals. Uh, there's just so many different things we can do. They come in different shapes where you can, we have football plaques in different sizes where, again, you can apply the uh, mascot. You can apply photographs of the team. You can put text on there, whatever you want to do. So with award products, you're able to create things that people traditionally went to an engraver for. But because we can do full color and photo imaging, um, I think it's actually a lot better than engraving. It's cheaper to produce. We can do it faster, and yet in most cases, we can actually charge more. So there's just a sample of some different award products. Uh, the next category here will be personalized gifts. So with personalization. Lots of cool things to do with personalization because we've got the pictures, okay? And you can go into the pet marketplace and do nothing but put, you know, together stuff for people's pets if you think about it. Uh, so there's this huge market so they can do, you know, babies, pets, weddings. I mean, lots of things you can do with personalized gifts, birthday presents. Uh, it just goes on and on, you know, Christmas presents. But if you look at, for example, the young lady sitting here on the couch, uh, she's holding a tablet and it has a cover and the cover's been sublimated. It has her name and it has a picture of her pet dog right here. Here he is again on the wall. These are some things that were done with sublimation on the wall. These are done on metal. Metal is very, very popular for photography. Works very well. Very popular type of decor product now. A little hard to see in the image, but we have more pictures here. We have the coffee mug, more pictures here. So all these different products, I can tell you almost all of them have the same image, this fellow right here. And I love the quilt here. This is a uh, sublimation quilt. And there's a picture of her and her husband. And who's right between them? The dog. Okay, so the dog is all over the place. Uh, but when you start looking at all the different things, by the way, her socks are even sublimated. Okay, it's a little hard to tell in the picture. Her socks are sublimated, so is his bandana. So all those certain things are done. The pillow is done. Okay, there are sublimation pillows out there as well. So you can see huge variety of things that go across a lot of different uh, elements of the personalized gifts marketplace. One of the top things in the personalized gift marketplace for sublimation is personalized cell phone covers. Uh, a typical cell phone cover is about $3 blank, and people are retailing them with pictures of, you know, children, grandchildren, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, uh, selfies. Uh, they're retailing for as much as $35 a piece, but the actual product only costs about 3 bucks and has $0.15 cents worth of ink on it. So, you know, with the right type of product in the right marketplace, you can get some, you know, really cool margins out of it. Then we have 
And this next slide is going to be labeled education, but uh, I really should have labeled it as schools and sports because when we look in that particular marketplace, and the reason we say education because a lot of our, our local sports are tied into the schools, um, but a big key here is what we call spirit products and fanware, which means, you know, obviously um, team-oriented products, school-oriented products that um, have appeal to the students as well as the families and, and whatnot. So there's a lot that goes on in that particular area. Uh, so again, if you look at just a list of stuff, stadium seat cushions, for example, very popular. We have sublimatable versions of that. Licensed plates, we have car flags you can do, um, obviously awards and plaques, license plates, cell phone covers. I mean, the list is absolutely huge of the different things we can put into that market. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about, which will come up here on your screen momentarily, uh, is the furnishings and decor market. Now, a lot of the products you're going to see here are, are a bit different. They're not necessarily finished products. A lot of times when you're working with furnishings and decor, you're working with cut goods. So you're working with fabric that's that's been cut and then you sublimate a certain area and then somebody sews it into the final product. Now, we have a wide range uh, of printing capabilities with our, our printers that we offer from Sawgrass. So you certainly, if you go into our larger one, our VJ series, you're able to do products that are 24 inches wide uh, by up to 200 yards long. Okay, and I don't know of anybody that's doing any product that big, but what I'm saying is it has a roll feed of paper. So your roll being 200 yards long gives you the capability to do a lot of things like signage, tapestries, um, different fabrics that can be turned into pillows, curtains, all these different types of things to be used in the interior. So, you know, that's why I try to show you just some of the different variations of where you can go with sublimation here. And, and you can see some of it there. Uh, one finished product that's pretty cool, and you have to use the bigger um, printer and, of course, heat press to do it, is these tabletops. There are cafe tables that are available for sublimation. And they, I'm not going to say they're indestructible. But because the sublimation's in the surface, it takes a lot to damage the sub sublimation. Because it, so it becomes a very long-lasting product that might be popular in a coffee house or you know a, a restaurant, a bar, or whatever. And there you can see an example of it right here under these ladies, the sublimated tabletop. And you know, looking back again at the scene with the dog, um, but that big photo quilt there is a product for sublimation that's fairly large. And you know it's actually designed that you can sublimate it with a small uh, printer and heat press because it has different like areas that you can just do a single area instead of the whole thing. But you know that's just showing, again, the variety of things that we can do with sublimation. Uh, then we have different finished products, too, that might be hard surface goods. That's the way we labeled it. And you see here somebody with a snowboard. And did somebody just take a snowboard and put it in a heat press? No. Um, some of these things like that are created during a manufacturing process. And we do have people that work directly with manufacturers. Uh, we've done it ourselves in a, a Sawgrass to help them produce bits and pieces of a product that's then manufactured into the final product, but it's sublimated along the way. But uh, under the category of hard surface goods, uh, trade show displays, um, tabletops, murals, and wall art, you know, we see that kind of stuff too. And then it brings us to signage. And signage is, is very, very popular with sublimation. Now, waiting for the slide. <laughs> Here it goes. Okay, we call it interior signage. And why do I say interior signage instead of signage? Sublimation is not UV resistant. Over time in direct sunlight, it will fade. How fast? We don't really know. It depends on the intensity of the sunlight and the location, how many hours per day, that type of thing. The reality is it doesn't fade super fast, so you probably get a couple of good years out of it before you start to notice the fading because it's so gradual. But definitely for interior surfaces, it's going to be a lot longer lasting. And that's why I say interior signage. As I mentioned earlier about photographs, uh, you can start putting in pictures of food, as you can see, you know, into this situation. But, um, you know, there's a picture here. Sorry, it's cut off. You know, more things there. But we can do some really, really cool things with signage. And it becomes a very big aspect of sublimation uh, because of all the different materials. that We have the glass, the metal, the wood, the acrylics. We even have slate pieces, slate being a form of stone, essentially. Uh, so that, again, opens doors many different directions to go to. And, and then the final one to touch on very quickly here is 
photography and fine art, really high-end graphic type of work. Um, you'll see here, there we go. Slides are a little slow. Photography and fine art, we're, we're seeing museum quality pieces being reproduced sometimes, things that are maybe going to be sold in a gift shop, as reproductions obviously. Uh, but we can do that with sublimation provided the initial image is of the highest quality you know, required for us to be able to reproduce it. So it opens up more areas to go. And a lot of this is not meant to say, hey, go sell to a gallery. A lot of what I'm trying to do is just say, listen, these are the capabilities you have. You go find out a way to market and make money with it because once you're into sublimation, you can do these things provided you have a way to sell them, okay? Last on my list, promotional products. A lot of different things. Probably the most popular promotional product that we do with Sublimation though is a coffee mug, okay? Coffee mugs, very, very popular, but there's lots and lots of things out there that you can put corporate and small business logos on, event logos and whatnot. Uh, some of those are given away as promotional products, some of them are sold. Uh, it just depends on what the you know, marketplace is, what the focus is. All right, so I'll switch gears for me. We're going to talk about what I call product packaging. And this is a key for selling. And I'm not talking about putting in a box. I'm not talking about labeling it. I'm talking about grouping things together uh, with a focus and catching people's attention. Because you want to have exciting products as people look at it and say, hey, wow, look at that, you know. And that's what you're trying to do. So how you package your products comes down this way I'm describing it is how do you talk about them? How do you group them? How do you present them to people? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of sample kits for different markets so that you understand what I'm talking about. And two things are going to happen here. Number one, you're going to see some well put together, well thought out sample kits. And then number two, um, you're going to see some more different types of sublimation. Okay. All right, so the very first one here is for a school system, uh, and this is really more sports oriented than anything else on here. And this is a nice sample kit to put together and take and show to, you know, the education marketplace, so team sports, whatnot. Uh, and the idea is that when you go in, you need something that looks professional. Don't go in with a box full of unrelated stuff because it doesn't look very professional. Uh, and I would also say it's okay to create your own school. You don't have to use a local school, and you certainly don't want to spend the money to create one custom for every school. You want to create one that you can show to every school in the face of the earth, in theory, you know, if that's the direction you want to go. So the idea of creating your own is so that you, you don't offend anyone. You don't want to go to East Side High and show them West Side High's stuff. Not good. Okay, especially they don't like each other. So here we have something put together. It's got the, the shirt, it's got a sock, it's got the ear warmers, flip-flops. I mean, it's a nice variety here. It's not too overwhelming. Seven to ten pieces is a good number to have in a sample kit that's focused. And it's going to turn some heads. Okay, we got some bright colors in there. Uh, looks pretty good. And this is the type of thing, because a lot of times people are talking to you about one item, and you want to show them multiple items. If you show them multiple items and you get that wow factor, then there's a good chance you can convert them into some additional products besides what they wanted originally. So that's the first one I was going to show you. The second one is more toward a corporate account. Now, unlike the other one, this at first looks a little disorienting maybe because everything is so different on each one. But this is the kind of stuff I really like. Because what we did here for this company, Hookers, which makes saltwater fishing tackle, is we still put the logo on everything. So everything has their logo. So if you actually, you can't see the other side of the mug, but it's on there. But if you look at all the different products, they all have their mug. But I like to be in, you know, a little bit unique and different on each one. For example, on this bag tag back here, we didn't do the full logo. We just took the lettering hookers out and put on there in solid white. So that was um, just to be a little different. But you can see the pictures, okay? Pictures are huge, right? Here we have a nice award plaque, and here's the guy that won it. That's Tom Bradley. Here we have a metal sign for the international headquarters, and here the picture tells the story, okay? Because you see the world record Atlantic sailfish that was caught on their tackle. It tells you the story. It tells you everything you need to know about who this company is and the products they make in that one picture. So the pictures can really enhance the value of the product, okay? Just like you get to see his smiling face, right? Over here, this bag tag says hooker has been there, caught that. And what do you have? You have the fish on there. So, again, it's telling you what it's all about. You catch more fish with our tackle. It's telling you a story. It's giving you a visual messaging, okay? So those are the kind of things that, that you're showing here 
in your particular sample kit. Let the sample kit tell the story, okay? That will help you sell more sublimation and make more money with sublimation. The next one is a soccer team from Europe, or football as I prefer to call it. And here it's got sort of the rubber stamp look where it's the same thing on everything. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's not my favorite approach in the sample kit. But by token, when you look at what they sell, and they sell these as souvenir products, spirit products, yeah, it's probably the right approach. But again, it's trying to show people, listen, look at all the different things that you can offer your fan base with your logo on it. Next, we're going to take a look at, and this is a very interesting set because of the unique pieces in it. Um, this would be a sample set that would be targeting a uh, boutique hotel, a bed and breakfast, that type of thing. And a lot of people don't realize all the cool things out there for sublimation. Uh, not always readily available. You may have to go searching. But you know, we have the toothbrush holder, the soft soap dispenser, and the coffee mug. And these are all ceramic, by the way. You see this dish? There's a small bowl. It's actually recessed. Yeah, there's a way to actually do that. So we can sublimate onto very nice, um, I'll say China in this case, provided it has a polymer you know, coating on it. Okay, So you can't take grandma's China and, and add sublimation to it. Okay, It does have to have been produced with a polymer coating. It is safe to eat off of. But if you think about the hotel room, typically say in a bed and breakfast, there's two people in the room. So we need one serving tray, two coasters, two mugs. In the bathroom, we'd have these two items. Yes, there are towels that can be sublimated, so we'd want that in each room, a whole set of towels, mind you, and the do not disturb, the room number, uh, keychain there, uh, and then you go into the dining area, the breakfast area, and you have the linens, and you have the, um, the dining wear uh, in the halls, clocks, signs. You know, you could do beautiful photos on uh, metal photo panels up and down the hallway. Think about that. You usually see that kind of stuff in these types of places. So, again, it's showing people all these cool things that you can do with sublimation that they may not even realize. Of course, you may not have even realized yet. So keep those in mind when you're talking about sample kits and things like that. Uh, the final one touches into the wedding marketplace, but I can tell you from having done presentations on the wedding market, it's way, way bigger than that. But, again, you're trying to put together – themed samples to show people what you can do and not only educate them on what you can do, but it encourage them, sometimes subconsciously, but to encourage them to buy more things. Because keep in mind, a lot of customers are very dull and boring, and it helps if you can go in and spice it up with a really good-looking sample kit to get their attention. Okay, So that's what it's all about. So with sublimation, we have lots of directions we can go. I don't even begin to touch on the, you know, all the different directions here. I mean, even the funeral industry buys a lot of products, we call memorial products, that have been sublimated. So open your eyes to all the things you can do. That's the cool thing is to start saying, oh, we can do these things. Look at these things. How can I apply them to the markets that I'm most familiar with? You know, how can I bring it in-house to make it happen? All right, so that covers what I wanted to cover here. And uh, Vincent, are you still with us? Yeah, I'm still here, Jimmy. You know, that was a, a lot of great information. I just want to remind everyone that's attending uh, that this is just part one of our five-part series. And also, we will be having a special promotion for all of our attendees. So make sure to check your emails. We will be sending out something shortly. And, you know, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at 800-215-0894 to speak to any of our experts. Um, but that was a lot of great information, Jimmy, and I'm definitely looking forward to part two. Excellent. So we'll see you next time for that. So everybody keep your eyes open for the emails that uh, Vincent was talking about because you can't go wrong with a special, you know. And, of course, reminders of some of the other upcoming. Well, we'll get a little deeper into the different products and things you'll need for sublimation. So, Vincent, thanks for having me out today, and I look forward to joining you again next week when we take another angle uh, and look a little deeper into starting a sublimation business.